Hello and welcome to the RHC Mindful Eating Workshop. I'm Dr. Jen, the chiropractor on the RHC team, and I'm here to talk about some sustainable ways you can eat mindfully. The RHC team is a group of like-minded, healthy, lifestyle-oriented women consistently striving to do better ourselves and do what we can to help others do the same. We foster and encourage positive energy and action in ourselves and our patients through education and by example of how to live spiritually, emotionally, and physically healthy lives. We're happy you're here taking the time to learn more about health. It means you're looking to make positive lifestyle changes. Nutrition and diet are things many people struggle with and one of the topics we get the most questions on. For this webinar, we'll go over what is mindful eating, what are strategies to eat mindfully, We'll show you how to set goals, and then we'll have several recipes for you to download. We'll also have an ebook download available. To find out what foods your body is requiring and what foods you should stay away from, we offer a full system hair and saliva analysis. Mindful eating. Mindful eating is acknowledging food as nourishment rather than using food as a reward, punishment, or as a tool. It is approaching food preferences and selection without judgment. You don't want to label foods as good or bad. Instead, label food as food or not food. We'll help teach you to recognize physical hunger cues and not wait until you're starving or, or, or waiting until you're overstuffed to stop eating. Let's start with what's in your fridge and in your cupboards. If you have junk in the house, you're going to eat the junk. Make sure there are always healthy, fresh snacks and food available. Include lots of vegetables and good proteins. Utilize fermented foods to increase your gut health. We do have an ebook of the favorite tools to include in your kitchen to make cooking fun and food prep fun. Check out our website for the book. It's called Kitchen Sink. Having a plan for what your meals are going to be helps de-stress eating. Think positively about your food and your body, and that will help absorb the good, positive vibes within that food. When your body is healthy, it craves the nutrients it needs rather than craving the things it doesn't need. Cravings can often be like mosquito bites. It feels good to itch them, but the problem is still there. Oftentimes we find that you crave what you're actually allergic to because that allergic reaction is actually an adrenaline response within your body. And our bodies a lot of times like adrenaline. Give some conscious thought to every meal. Why are you eating? Are you feeling up for a workout, trying to kick a cold or a virus, or maybe you're eating to socialize? When are you eating? Don't eat late at night. What are you eating? That's a whole other webinar. Watch for the announcement on that other webinar because what you put into your body is really important. And We really do have a mantra at the clinic that if it's not food, it's not food. How do you eat? Slow down, shut off the digital devices, and be present. How much are you eating? Eat just enough to satisfy your hungry. Where are you eating? Family time boosts hormones and helps with your digestion. Food is a great way to connect with your body. But if you're sucked into the digital world, you're being pulled away from the present moment. And media is filled with poor influences regarding food. So shut off the TV and put down the phone. Enjoy your food and enjoy the company you are with while you're eating. In life, there has to be a balance. Our recommendation for just about everything is 80-20. 80% of the time you should eat healthy and 20% of the time you can be less strict. When you are being less strict, that's when you don't judge and you just simply enjoy it. This applies to what you eat, meaning you should eat organic 80% of the time and non-organic 20% of the time. Or look at it this way, the things you eat the most of, you want those to be organic and fresh. We want to meet in the middle of the hunger scale. One means you've waited too long, so always have snacks on hand to ensure this doesn't happen, like nuts, seeds, veggies, all work great for this. Five is, is the ultimate. That means that you've eaten and you feel great. Replenished, not too stuffed, just right. Ten means you ate too much or too fast. We all know what that feels like and it's not good. 
consciously think about this scale every time you eat. So you make a connection with your hunger and how much you're ingesting. Do self check-ins before you eat, during, and after you eat. Just, just kind of consciously recognize what number you're at at that time. It's hard to change our eating habits, much, much less hard to change what it is that we eat. It's easier to switch out a healthy food for a bad one rather than changing how you're eating. So start there. Journal your food intake and change what it is you're eating before you change when you're eating. Once you start seeing the benefits of eating healthy, it's easier to continue making those changes. One of the benefits that we offer at the clinic is to do a health analysis or a food analysis based on what it is that you're eating. And then we just change out those foods for you rather than changing your habits. It's a great way to start. All we require is that you do a seven day food journal. If you've done that, email us that information and we can offer you an evaluation and a, a new meal plan that really kicks off mindful eating. We have some tricks on our mindfulness toolkit. The first one is the hunger scale. Stop and gauge hunger before you eat, during, and after. Keep a journal of those numbers and see if you can find a trend. Are there times when your numbers are extreme? Are there also times when your numbers are from maybe a certain environmental effect that's happening? Maybe you're with a particular person or persons or doing a specific activity when your number is extreme. If that's the case, you need to make changes in those areas. Start with the ones that are the most extreme and work to get yourself constantly toward the middle ground. Toolkit number two, some people are genetically wired to be more predisposed to be overweight, but genes only give us the predisposition and it doesn't completely control how your genes will be expressed. Your environment plays a large role in this. Environment being the food you're eating and the mood you're in when you're eating it. Number three, journal. Journaling works great. Use it to track your food intake and also for tracking your mood while you're eating. Journaling is a great way to self-reflect and find why you are overeating or mindlessly eating. Assign a hunger scale number every time you eat. Number four, slow down. Take time to enjoy food prep. Take time to enjoy the food you're eating. Be present. Take a big breath before each bite. Count to 30 while you're chewing and before you swallow. Your body releases enzymes in the mouth to help digest food. So stop and chew your food. Really taste it. Enjoy the flavor and the texture. Have a safety net for activity when you realize you're eating because of stress. Maybe this is a walk or reading a book. Have a specific snack ready when you recognize that you're stressed. Make it a healthy snack. Use meditation and breath work to slow down your overactive brain. Set a timer for a minute every time you're going to eat. Take this time to be grateful. Take this pause as a chance to make clear decisions and decrease the likelihood that you're going to be eating because of a trigger. Mindfulness toolkit number six, know your triggers and then redirect. Once you recognize what your triggers are, you can more easily plan for what to do when you're experiencing them. If the trigger is external, change your environment. If the trigger, trigger is internal, try tapping or saying a positive mantra. If you're wondering what tapping is, give us a call or an email or visit our website. We offer tapping sessions, which is also a form of emotional freedom technique. Redirect. Sensory input is very powerful. Use noise and sense to bring you into the present moment and make better decisions. You can do this by smelling an essential oil, ringing a bell, playing some music, lighting a candle, some essential oils or some incense, something that makes you consciously aware of your actions and puts you in a positive mindset. Toolkit number seven, learning how to eat healthy is a skill you need to learn and can take a couple of years in our experience. A couple of years of strongly educating yourself in the area of what food actually is and how it plays a role in your health. 
Healthy oils are good for you. They allow your body to produce hormones and help regulate inflammation, which is the source of most diseases. Quite a few people try to stay away from oils. That's not necessarily a good plan. They really do, when they're a good oil, assist in health. Vegetables are also anti-inflammatory and contain fiber, which is great for intestinal health. Your body requires half your body weight in ounces of water each day. Make sure that you're getting that in. Fiber is better sourced from vegetables, but can also be gained from the whole grain, meaning a good grain that contains all parts of the kernel. We are such a heavy protein-laden society, so don't do it in that, don't overdo it in that area. Make sure you're eating good quality proteins also. Think about the purpose of eating. Include other reasons besides hunger. Are you asking for nutrients for your body to help accomplish a goal like a workout or more energy to accomplish the day? Are you eating for comfort or to clean the system out? Foods are a part of every culture. It's a great way to bond with the ones you love. Take time to teach your kids about food and to teach the next generation about eating healthy and eating mindfully. Number eight, cooking can be really enjoyable. Start with a simple recipe. YouTube is a great resource for learning how to cook. Be prepared with all of the tools and ingredients you'll need and set aside enough time for cooking. Have the fun tools in your kitchen. That's, this makes cooking even more enjoyable. We'll share a link at the end on what each one of us are must-haves of the RHC team are for in our kitchen. Having the right tools really makes all the difference and makes cooking more efficient. Now that you have a better idea of what mindful eating is, think about one area where you eat mindfully. Maybe you do great during the day. Maybe you start out with a really good breakfast. Now let's do the opposite and think of an area where you eat mindlessly. Are you a late night snacker? Do you eat when you're in a particular place, like on the couch in front of the TV? Do you eat when you're stressed and you're stressed most of the time? Now name three strategies for mindful eating. For example, <clears throat> taking a deep breath before each bite and chewing slowly. Or preparing your food while thinking about how this food is going to serve your health, serve your body. Put the, the power of intention is strong. Put those positive vibes and energy into that food and then your body can absorb all of those positive vibes and energy. Plan ahead so you aren't hungry and you're better able to make good food choices. SMART goals. This is a worksheet for you to be more concrete in achieving your goals. Each goal should be specific. What are you trying to accomplish? Use the W's to be precise. Who, what, where, when, why. Also a goal must be measurable. Including measures is important so you know how close you are to reaching your goal. It also needs to be achievable. Make sure you have resources to reach your goals and they are things you can make happen. The goals should be relevant, relevant to your needs and to support your values and your vision for the future. Don't design something that you can't achieve and don't underestimate what you're trying to accomplish. It should also be timed. Goals should have deadlines so you can review and revise when necessary. Develop a schedule for your goals. Here's an example of a specific goal. Once you've completed this page, check in with it often to make sure you're staying on track. 
again, if you have someone who works best with accountability and coaching, utilize them. It's always great to have somebody help. Example, example number one is eating three meals at a table this week without distractions. Example number two, purchase ingredients for preparing nourishing recipes this week. Number three, prepare two lunches ahead of time to enjoy at work this week. Let's work on this mindfulness together. Teach everybody else you know about mindfulness too. It's always great to share knowledge. Some of the services that we offer at RHC are lifestyle coaching, chiropractic, nutritional planning, tapping sessions, acupuncture, massage, electrodermal screening, full system analysis, including DNA and hair and saliva analysis, guided full system detoxification programs, and a lot of extra resources for you. Visit our website for many of these. We also are available by, for contact on social media pat, platforms and have a lot of resources on there also. Thanks again. This is Dr. Jen from the RHC team, and I can't wait to talk to you personally and help you in your goal of achieving a healthy lifestyle.